you saw in my previous video how to add SNES games to the SNES Classic. Now I'm going to show you how to compress them, and it's quite easy. I'm going to take our Run Saber and SOS, two games that I added in my last video. I'm going to go into my Games SNES folder. We're going to go right into uh, Run Saber first. And this is qu you need to have 7-zip installed. You're going to right click on the SFROM. 7-zip. Add to archive. You're going to choose the archive format for GZIP. Have the compression level set to Ultra. Then I'm just going to delete the SFROM, which is um, 1 megabyte. The new compression is 497 kilobytes. That's quite a difference there, especially if you had multiple games. And this is kind of nice because in a desktop file, it just needs to have this part of the entry in it. And the way the SNES Classic is configured, it doesn't matter whether or not you point to the GZIP game within the desktop file. It's still going to load. So we're going to delete that. I want to make sure that the desktop file is correct because, as I said, Hashi tends to change a couple perimeters in here. So I'm going to go into Notepad. My path with the four, double forward slash after the zero is correct. I still have my icon correct, so I'm going to leave that alone. Now I'm going to go into the other game. SOS, and I'm going to do the same thing. 7-zip, add to archive. GZIP Ultra. Delete the other one. This is a uh, one megabyte down to 727. Not bad. Check the desktop file to make sure it's correct. Still have my double forward slash. This is all correct. And you can watch my previous video to make sure you know what I mean by these command line changes. And of course, if I want to, I could change how long my save states are good for, too. Right there is about 16 seconds. Right there is about 16 seconds. I could change that to like 3600 and have multiple minutes if I really want to. And if we do a uh, save state manager as well, you can see, you know, how much they're taking up. And on average, I've seen them taking up about 2 megabytes each. I'm going to power it on and see what I have for save states. I can't remember if I made any or not. So, Castlevania takes up about 2 megabytes. I mean, it's looking like, on average, you're taking about 2 megabytes per game. So, anyways, we're going to flash these with a compressed format and even though in here it's pointing to the actual game the SFROM the GZIP is pretty much just going to be taken into account automatically there's nothing extra you need to do just zip it up leave it in the folder and you're good to go now we're going to sync these And we're loading the GZIP right now. SOS works just fine. Sorry about the odd camera angle. Run Saber works just fine. Now in my previous video I showed you how the command line fix missing art and such. Let's see what we have here. Chrono Trigger is screwed up with the art right now, so I'm going to fix Chrono Trigger for the hell of it. And I guess we could uh, G-zip it as well, so I'm going to find out what folder it's in. It's in the Chrono folder, so I'm going to go into that folder. And I'm going to 
Oh, that one's already G-zipped. No problem there. So I'm going to go into the desktop file. And I'm going to have to remove these part of the entries. And I pronounce this wrong every time. It, I'm just saying NES Kekakachi. Somebody needs to show me how to pronounce that right. So I'm removing that. Then the profile after zero, I'm going to do that double forward slash. And I'm going to save this. Now I'm going to reflash, and my Chrono Trigger art should be pointed to directly. And again, like I said, we could change the save state period too. I'm going to change that to 3600 and reflash this. Let's see what happens. It would actually help if I selected the game. User error there. <laughs> okay, let's see what happens here. And Chrono Trigger is still improper. Like I said, there are a few bugs related to this whole process, and let's try to fix Chrono Trigger one more time. Now you get the gist of what it means when you try doing stuff prematurely. You get to encounter the bugs. And I'm assuming that the desktop file may have been altered by Hakshi, so we're going to fix that back again. Yep, it got altered by Hakshi, so we're going to fix that. And in an official release that comes out within a week or two, this will be taken into account and you won't have to worry about this. But for right now, it likes to auto-change on you. But we fixed that just now. So we have the save state set to 3600, which I believe is milliseconds. We corrected the icon location. We corrected the profile point. So make sure that's saved. It's saved. I'm going to flash one more time. And the game is selected. And it's good to make mistakes because when you make mistakes, you're actually gaining experience in the process. So we should have a longer period of time for the save state, as well as the artwork should be correctly pointed to. And as I said before, it doesn't take very long to edit these files. So we got Chrono Trigger fixed here. You can do one of two things. You could edit the files as you need to before you, you know, before you flash again. Secondly, you could copy and paste them to a different directory and just cut overwrite them then flash. So we're going to load Chrono Trigger and we're going to try the save state and see what happens. We'll let it play for like a minute and see how long of a save state we get. Fantastic game. And I'm definitely going to have to try to get a full version of Chrono Trigger for PlayStation 1 so we can get that orchestral soundtrack on there. That should be decent enough. I'm sure we could have much a much longer save state, but at uh, 600 milliseconds or so, you get about 16 seconds. I'm going to go back to the main GUI and save this. Now I'm going to push rewind, and by putting it up to that 3600, that's how much time we got there. So that's definitely different than the 16 seconds that was on there initially. Now we're going to see how big of a save state this is on the computer.
And again, I apologize for my camera being all over the place. That's what happens because I have it on my computer desk. So we're going to go into the save state manager and see how big this chrono trigger save state is. Didn't show up in there yet. Let me power it off. And that's another thing that needs to be completely fixed within the newest Hashi is the save state manager. And he's been doing a few fixes with that as well. See, right now I'm not showing that I have that uh, save state for the game. But obviously if you uh, go into your system and do the reset, which I'm going to do. I did this previously on the NES Classic. We're going to test this little theory out real quick. Every little bit of info helps out. And of course we have to close the safe state manager so we can get access to the system again. The safe state is still there, so it means there's just a a little bit of work that needs done on the safe state manager, which we know Cluster is going to get working fantastically. So I'm going to go up into my settings here. And I'm going to do a factory reset. It will not remove the games or the folder structure when it comes down to it, but it will wipe out the save states. Then I'm going to go back in the save state manager and it should have wiped out the two that I made. And when you do the system reset, you just have to repick your language and see all the games are still there. Nothing to worry about. But my Chrono Trigger save state is gone. Now we're going to check out save state manager to make sure that the Castlevania one cleared out. So again, save state manager, and it's, they're both gone, so it worked successfully. I know one of his latest commits was fixing the save state manager, so it's going to work a hell of a lot better when it comes down to it. He's doing such a fantastic job. Him and Mad Monkey are awesome. But anyways, uh, I would still suggest you wait until the official release of Hakshi when he's done with all iron out any kinks and bugs because there is really a lot to take into account especially if you watch my last video on how to add SNES games to the SNES Classic. But I hope you enjoyed the video and hope this, hope this clarifies a few things for you. There will be more to come.